Hi everybody. On this video, I wanted to go over some spring pruning tips. Stay tuned. That was horrible. All right, let's get into it. So I get a lot of questions here at the garden center on how do I prune this? How do I prune that? When's the best time to prune? Now those are all just gonna be some easy research things that you can do on Google or you can go to a YouTube channel. And I mean, you type in anything in the search in YouTube and there's somebody is gonna have had a video on it. But I'm glad you're here because I'm just gonna give you a visual representation of what I do when it comes to pruning. This is a weeping cherry, a weeping snow fountain cherry, gets 12 by 12 under ideal circumstances. But the key to this plant is blooms. I, I love the blooms on this. This thing's swelling up right now. It's getting ready to go. It's getting ready to pop. And, uh, but if you can see this, so we have a stem that is healthy and vigorous and pliable. And then you have this part right here, which doesn't have any growth and it looks desiccated. It, it doesn't look like the rest of the branch. So what I like to do is I like to take my trusty Coronas because I'm broke and I can't afford Felcos and I'm just gonna nip it right there. See that? Now, if we look on the inside of that twig, there's no green cambium layer. And a cambium layer is that thin wall of cells that move nutrients and water up and down the tree or down the branches. Sometimes you're just gonna have to snip a little bit off closer to the tip and start working your way down until you find healthy tissue. That's another good tip for for shrubs and things like that. But with something deciduous, you don't know until it leaves out. But if you go ahead and you give it a quick little prune, that's why I like to prune in the spring, kind of right before stuff wakes up, uh, with certain exceptions. I mean, obviously I don't want to do that with mop hydrangeas. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to prune off the old growth. So finding out when things flower is a pretty big indication if I'm going to prune in the spring or not, or if I'm going to prune after it flowers. The best tip that I can give you is if it blooms super early, it probably blooms on old growth, right? So if it blooms like right now, it set its buds the previous year. So for Cynthia, uh, for instance, that yellow bush that you see that, that blooms around this time, um, you don't want to prune that in the fall because you're pruning off all your flower buds. You want to prune that after it, it blooms. Anyway, I wanted to show you this because this is really easy to see because we have buds all over the place. Um, here's a branch. Can you see this one? Yeah, maybe you can. Um, all the way down to the tip, there is no life. I can't see anything happening all the way down here. But this branch, see where this links in here? This branch has, clearly has viable tissue. So again, we're going to look for healthy tissue because there's no point in us keeping this on the stem so and it's not aesthetically pleasing i mean if you spend 350 dollars on on a weeping snow fountain cherry please take good care of it let it live to its full potential if i'm going to start trimming this maybe i'm a little apprehensive i don't necessarily know if this is healthy tissue or not i'm going to start trimming it and i'm going to start looking on the inside of the stem to see if I can find any healthy tissue that I'm pruning and I don't really see anything. So a lot of times I'll have customers come in and while we're talking, I will prune the plant that they're wanting to take with them or, um, and just kind of give them a quick class on how to do that. And it's very simple. Um, you know, like this one, this entire branch all the way down to the tip has healthy tissue with the exception of some of these little branches. And that's kind of one of the unfortunate side effects in living in captivity is they're a little bit more susceptible to, you know, they're grown in Colorado or they're grown in, in Tennessee and then they come to Missouri and it's 15 degrees outside. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of a change. So sometimes you get more winter dieback 
when things are in captivity than if they were in their home, their permanent home. So yeah, every single thing that I've trimmed off of this, um, just using that technique of kind of looking for healthy tissue. So let's just try this one up here. Okay, so there's a little bit of green. I don't know if we can see that. See that? That green cambium, right? So this is the branch that I took, right? The very tip. And let's start clipping on this and we'll see. Okay, so this, you can see, is brown. See it's brown on the inside compared to this. that green so just as an experiment so you guys can learn a little bit let's start snipping this off to find out where that healthy tissue was and how much of a mistake I made there it is well kind of there we go all right, so this is that original piece I showed you. And this is right where the green, healthy, viable tissue started. So we only made that much of a mistake. Does that make sense? Um, we only lost that much growth because I trimmed it off a little too early. But I went to the next bud. See, so that was this one here. I went to the next bud here. Now this is gonna take over. This is gonna start getting all the hormones. This is gonna start growing faster. So those are just some quick tips on pruning. Start at the tip if you're not sure if something is gone or not, and just start clipping on it and looking at it. And depending on how brave you are, you can go you know, down a little bit more. And guys, I guarantee, you do this a couple times. I mean, after a couple branches, you're gonna have this figured out. Look, here in a second, we're gonna go back to my house and I'm gonna show you my weeping cherry in my backyard that I planted last year. Give, give plants some time. They need some time to just chill and relax a little bit. Then, the next year, let's start pruning on them, right? Um, and some of these, you can look, like if you start looking closer to the trunk, when you start looking closer to the trunk, you'll see that there's, there's a, so you have this big long branch that hangs out of the trunk, like this. And then you have a little side shoot that's shooting out from the trunk. And basically what that's telling you is no nutrients, no anything are, are going down this stem. The, the plant has cut it off. So remember when we talk about plants being a business, my other video where I'm like, how are plants like a business, this corporation here has decided that that satellite store is not cutting its weight and it doesn't have the market share to support it. If you're using these techniques, you're not gonna hurt anything if you kind of take it slow. So one of my tips for, for new skid steer operators is go slow, because we've all heard this if you're a military person like I am. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. If you go slow and you hit something in a skid steer, you do a lot less damage than if you're going fast, right? If you go slow when you're pruning, you're gonna be able to catch that green viable tissue. All right, guys, thank you very much. Hey, after this, let's go and I'll show you my weeping cherry at my house. All right, so remember I said I wanted to come back and I wanted to show you guys my weeping uh, snow fountain cherry. Now this is the one that I planted at the end of November. So it was dormant when I planted it um, and it kind of just woke up. But remember that this one had been acclimated to our temperatures at the time. So there is, and I, and I went over this thing with a fine tooth comb to see if I could find any uh, desiccated tissue on here and there's none. So enamored with how well this thing did, um, especially because three weeks ago, it was negative 15 degrees here, you know, and there's no, I mean, the branches are going very close to the ground. 
Um, I'm just, I'm super impressed with this. So that is the benefit. Now I'm not going to, there's a couple branches in here that I think are gonna kind of uh, um, insult the general frame of the tree and I'm gonna go in and take those out. But remember when I said that I like things to just kind of chill for a year before I start cutting on them? I wasn't talking about desiccated tissue. What I was talking about is when I'm gonna shape the general aesthetics of the tree, um, cultivate that shape that I want, that story I want the tree to tell. I'm gonna wait uh, till next year to do that. And basically what I'm gonna do with weeping snow fountains is I'm just gonna kind of thin thin out some of the smaller branches um, to let it be a little bit more transparent in the summertime.